Okay, so uh, uh, I guess we'll begin. Um, so uh, Priyanka is uh, currently at Waterloo. Um, she's got these very exciting uh, sieving algorithms in Alpine, and so she's going to tell us about it. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, the organizers, for inviting me. So I'll be talking about some provable sieving algorithms for the shortest vector problem and the closest vector problem in the LP norm. I'll go th quickly through the first two sections because I think we all know much about these two things, some preliminary definitions and introducing the problem, and then I'll talk about the algorithms. So as we all know, given n linearly independent vectors, a lattice is an integral combination of these vectors. And here n is the rank of the lattice, and D is the dimension of the lattice. If the rank is equal to the dimension, we have a full rank lattice. For example, in the figure below, this is not a full rank lattice. This set of independent vectors is called a basis of the lattice, which is not unique. For example, the one above is a basis. Uh, there are two bases of the Z2 lattice, and below, we, this, is not a lat this is not a basis of this lattice. So fundamental parallelopiped. So given a basis of um, lattice, a fundamental parallelopiped is a combination of this basis vectors where the coefficients lie between 0 and 1. This depends on the basis. For example, this figure shows two fundamental parallelopipeds of the same lattice. And for any z vector on the real plane, there exists a unique vector in the fundamental parallelopiped such that their difference is a lattice vector. And we call this operation as y congruent to z modulo b. The translates of this fundamental parallelopiped, they actually form a partition of the span of this lattice. The i successive minimum is the smallest r, such that the lattice contains at least i linearly independent vectors of length at most r. And the first such minimum is the length of the shortest non-zero lattice vector, which is also equal to the smallest distance between any two lattice vectors. For example, these red vectors are the shortest vector of the lattice. OK, now in the shortest vector problem, we are given as input a lattice, which is specified by a basis. And the output uh, of this uh, problem should be a non-zero lattice vector of the shortest norm or, some, um, or up to some approximation of the shortest vector. For example, in this figure, this, red, this blue vectors are a basis of this uh, lattice. The red one is the ex exact shortest vector of the lattice, and this brown one is the approximate shortest one. In a closest vector problem, the input instance consist consists of a lattice, which is specified by a basis again, and a target vector. And the goal is to output a lattice vector, which is closest to this target, either exactly or up to some approximation factor. For example, here, the, uh, the green one is the target vector. The red vector is the exact shortest vector to this this green vector, and the brown one is the approximate short, uh, exact closest vector, I'm sorry, and the brown one is the approximate closest vector. OK, since we are talking about LP norm, some quick recap about the LP norm of a vector is it is given by this uh, quantity, summation over mod xi whole to the power p, total whole to the power 1 by p, and in the L infinity, L infinity norm, it's just the maximum of the absolute value of, value of any of the coordinates of the vector. A ball is a set of all points, which is within a fixed distance of radius uh, from a fixed point or center. For example, in this figure, we see a number of closed balls in L1, L2, L4, and L infinity norm. OK, the applications of SVP and CVP, as we all know by now, are various, like factoring polynomials over rationals, checking the solvability by radicals, solving low density subset sum problems, script analysis, cryptography, and integer programming. OK. So first, I'll give some quick recap of some sieving algorithms for SVP and CVP. Then I'll discuss some new algorithms which we have. So much of the work on sieving algorithms have been done in the Euclidean norm. The first such sieving algorithm, randomized sieving algorithm, was given by Atai Kumar and Shiva Kumar to solve SVP and approximate CVP. And they ran in single exponential time. The fastest sieving algorithm for SVP for a constant approximation factor runs in time 2 to the power 0.802n plus small o n, and it was given by Liu, Wang, Zhu, and Zheng. The fastest provable algorithm for SVP and CVP is based on discrete Gaussian sampling. 
It runs in time and space to the bar n plus small o n, and it has been given by Agarwal, Dadush, Regev, Stephens, David Ebuis. The theoretically fastest heuristic algorithm for SVP runs in time 3 by 2 whole to the bar n by 2, and it has been given by Becker, Duca, Gamma, and Larhoven. In the, in the non Euclidean norm, Blomer and Noe and Arvind and Joglicker first generalized the AKS algorithm to give exact and approximate algorithms for SVP in the LP norm and CVP, approximate CVP. It ran in time 2 to the power order n. They did not specify the exact value of the constant. I'll give you this value of this constant in later slides. Eisenbrand uh, and the others, they improved this uh, algorithm in the L infinity norm. Uh, so they gave an al algorithm for approximate CVP up to a factor approximation factor 1 plus epsilon with a uh, running time which has a better dependence on this approximation factor epsilon. So it ran in time 2 to the power order n log 1 by epsilon whole to the power n. And in a joint work with Agarwal, Divesh Agarwal, uh, we had this result which improved the running time for this exact and approximate SVP and CVP, approximate CVP in the L infinity norm. I'll talk more about this algorithm because the LP norm algorithm is just a generalization of this algorithm. Okay, some quick recap about some, res some hardness results for SVP and CVP. The first NP hardness result for CVP in the L in LP norm and SVP in the L infinity norm was given by Van M. de Boas in 1981. The NP hardness of CVP in the LP norm and SVP in the infinity norm up to a factor n to the power c by log log n has been given by Dinu, Raj, Kindler, and Safra. Then Havi Vendor gave, building on a work by Cote, uh, they gave a hardness of SVP in the LP norm for a factor, hardness factor of 2 to the power log n, 1 minus epsilon, assuming NP not a subset of R time, n to the power poly log n. And recently, I've shown the hardness of CVP in the LP norm and SVP in the infinity norm up to factor polynomial factor into the power C, where C is strictly less than half, assuming the projection games conjecture. Okay, so in any sieving algorithm, usually the most expensive part, the most time consuming part is the sieving iterations. So I'll first explain a bit about the sieving uh, algorithm, sieving procedure. And since all these Blomer and Noe sieve, which works in the LP norm, is a generali generalization of the um, uh, sieving procedure given by AKS, so I call it the AKS sieve. So in one sieving iteration, we are first given a set of capital and lattice vectors, which are of a certain length, say maximum length r. So they are all contained within a ball of radius capital R. And after one iteration, we want some shorter vectors of length, say, gamma times r, where gamma is strictly less than 1. So, so in a sieving iteration, first what we do is, in the AKS type of sieve, we select a subset of centers. So we select these centers in such a way that the number of centers should not be too large because they determine the space complexity. And also, we, we, want, them to, we want to select them in such a way such that for all the rest of the vectors can be associated with any such center uh, in such a way that like each such vector should be within distance gamma r of any one of the centers. So in this figure, the red, the red vectors are the centers and we have drawn a ball of radius gamma r around each of the centers. So we have associated all these vectors which are within this radius to each center. Then we take the difference of uh, these vectors, so we get a number of shorter vectors of length, say, gamma r. And then we discard all the centers. So, so, so after polynomial number of sieving operations, we, expect, we get a number of lattice vectors of norm at most r0 times lambda 1, where r0 is some constant. So to give some provable guarantees on the running time, space complexity, or success probability of the algorithm, we, we face some issues. And one of the issues is we cannot ensure the distribution of the vectors after each sieving step. So we, it might be that we will end up with all zero vectors. And the solution is, for each sample vector, we add a randomly chosen perturbation vector. So to summarize, so what we do is initially, so to summarize the whole, sie uh, whole sieving algorithm in the LP norm, so initially, we sample a number of perturbation vectors uniformly from a ball of radius r0, and we calculate some perturbed vectors. Then we do a number of sieving iterations. So in each sieving iteration, we perform all the operations on the perturbed vectors, and these operations get reflected on the corresponding lattice vectors. 
So at the end of all the sieving iterations, we pa take pairwise difference of all the vectors in the final set and finally output the one with the shortest norm. So, uh, so we see the complexity of the AKS sieve is uh, quadratic in the sense that if we start with capital N vectors, we, the time complexity is usually order n squared. That's because in each sieving iteration, to associate each vector to a center, we have to compare with all the centers, okay? So, so, so this kind of AK sieving operations can be viewed in a different way. It's like as if we have a space of vectors and we are subdividing that space in a number of subregions. And we are dividing it in such a way such that the number of subspaces should not be large because they determine the space complexity, which also gets reflected in the time complexity. And we should be able to map each of the vectors to each subregion efficiently so that our time complexity does not blow up much. So to cater to these problems, so recently I came up with this linear sieving procedure. So what we do is, so in the previous algorithms we saw that the larger LP hyperball has been divided into smaller LP balls. So what we do, uh, instead of that, we divide the LP ball into smaller hypercubes, okay? So suppose we have a lot of vectors of within a ball of radius capital R. So we partition the space into hypercubes such that the longest diagonal has length say small r, where small r is the desired length of the vectors after one sieving step. So this, this, this guarantees that the distance between any two vector within each hypercube is at most small r. And also we can map each vector to a region just, just by looking at the coordinates. So it can be done in small n plus small o one time. And then we choose at most one center in each such hypercube, and then we take the difference. Okay. Now, these number of partitions or hypercubes, they determine the space complexity. And this can be bounded by this term, order two plus two by gamma whole to the power small n, if the, your small r is gamma times r. And this comes from um, upper bound on the number of translates of a hypercube, which is centered at the origin, which is uh, number of translates which are needed to cover this LP ball. So for example, in this L1 norm, these are the number of translates of the hypercube which are needed to cover this L1 ball. So this is, the, th these are the, these are, this is how the partitions look in the L2 norm and in the L infinity norm. Now, uh, to de determine the number of partitions, uh, we can look at it as if we are dividing the each of the axes into intervals. And the number of partitions we get, they depend on how we divide each axis into intervals, okay? So for example, so this is one kind of partition we get of the L infinity ball. If we take the starting hypercube somewhere near the center, we could have also taken the hypercube in at one corner, and then we can get a different partition. And we actually get a number, much less number of partitions in this way. So we get order two by gamma whole to the power n, okay? So we see after this procedure that our space complexity increases a bit, but our time complexity is much better. So if we compare with the existing algorithm, so this is the space and time complexity of Bloomer and Noyes algorithm. They did not give any, I mean, they did not calculate these constants. These constants have been calculated by me after incorporating the same kind of optimizations which I did for my linear sieving algorithm. So they have a time complexity of two to the power three point eight four n, and the time complexity of linear sieve is two to the power two point seven five one n, which is better. But our space complexity is worse than theirs. In the Euclidean norm, we have a better time complexity compared to the AKS sieve, uh, which the time complexity com calculated by Hanrod, Kukol, and Stelle, they have a time complexity two to the power two point five seven one n, and we have a time complexity of two to the power two point four n n. But again, our space complexity is uh, worse. In the L infinity norm, we have a space and time complexity of two to the power two point four four three n plus small n. Uh, by uh, uh, till now, uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is the fastest. Now to take advantage, so, so what we see now in the quadratic sieving procedure, we have an advantage that our space complexity is less and in the linear sieve, our space complexity increases but the time complexity reduces. So to get the best of both worlds, we can combine these two procedures. What we do? So suppose we, ha we start with this bigger ball, bigger hyper hyperball where we have all the vectors. 
Then we divide this region into a somewhat bigger hypercubes of some, where the length of the longest diagonal is say R dash. Then within each hypercube, we do a quadratic sieving procedure. So what we get after doing this is, um, we get some improvement over the linear sieving procedure. So for example, if we compare with the list sieve birthday algorithm, so the list sieve birthday algorithm has a time complexity of 2 to the power 2.465 n plus small o n. And this is the time complexity as calculated by Handrat Pukol Stele of the algorithm, of the list sieve algorithm, which was actually given by Michancio and Valgaris. And we have a somewhat better time complexity, 2 to the power 2.25 n plus small o n. But our space complexity is worse. But again, both our space and, ti spa uh, space and time complexity is uh, uh, worse than the fastest uh, provable algorithm till now, which was given by Agarwal uh, and Dadush Regev and Stif Stephens Davidovis. They have a space and time complexity to the power n. And this kind of mixed sieving algorithm actually has the maximum advantage in the Euclidean norm. So we can also we can also modify our algorithms to get some approximate uh, approximation algorithms for large constant approximation factor. The procedure is very simple. I'm not going into the details. We just skip the last step of the exact algorithm. So we sample, we sieve, and we return a non-zero vector. And we get an algorithm for CVP by using this reduction from approximate CVP to approximate SVP. Okay. So by doing this, we see that uh, we have an approximate uh, algorithm which has a time complexity 2 to the power nearly 2n, which is better than the algorithm by Blomer and Noe. They have a time complexity 2 to the power 3.16n. And again, our space complexity is worse. In the Euclidean norm, we don't gain much. Our both space and time complexity is much better than the fastest algorithm till now. They have a time complexity 2 to the power 0.802n, and ours is 2 to the power 1.73n plus small o n. How does the approximation factor enter now? Sorry? How does the approximation factor enter as a running time? So what is the approximation factor? No. It's a large, some large constant approximation factor. Large. Ah, OK. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it, it enters the small o of n. Yeah, it enters the small o n. And the L, in the L infinity norm, the space and time complexity is 2 to the power 1.585 n plus small o n. Thank you. This much. Okay, so we have time for questions. Uh, can we go back to a few slides, actually? Uh, yeah, Wait, what was this? The reduction from approximate, I see. I see. This is in Bloomer and Noy. I don't know about this. Yeah, this is this is this was a reduction which was given by Bloomer and Noy, which which is like a reduction from approximate CVP to approximate SVP in the LP norm. So using any which runs in polynomial time, so we can use any oracle for approximate SVP and solve the approximate CVP. But the approximation factor in the CVP is, is one plus epsilon, something like that. Mm. It's it's not a an exponential time thing. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Cool. Uh, any other question? Okay. Let's uh, thank Priyanka again.